everyone, and welcome to Theo's Thoughts, Episode 4. I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt because today's Friday, um, and I like to wear Hawaiian shirts uh, to the office on Friday. I wanted to catch on, but so far no one else has joined me. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Paisios of Mount Athos was one of the greatest spiritual teachers of the 20th century. He was a simple Orthodox monk, not even a priest, and yet his reputation for wisdom, miracles, prophecies, ascetic labors, and deep love for all mankind set the hearts of millions of Orthodox Christians on fire. He was living proof of the active presence of Christ in the Church. Now, before he became a monk, St. Paisios had been a radio operator during the Greek Civil War. And what was interesting was that he connected his knowledge of radio equipment to his experience of God. He said, if we want to be connected with God, we should coordinate our, the transmitter to the frequency of love and our receiver to that of humility. Love and humility are the frequency in which God works. We need to work hard as much as we can in order to catch this frequency. Then we will be in contact with God and our minds will continuously be with God. What he means is that uh, love is what is needed to communicate to God and humility is what's needed to receive communication from God. And there's a profound insight here, I think, because radio signals are everywhere around us, even though we can't see them. They're even passing through our bodies right now as we speak. Um, but we can't detect them with our senses. We can't see, hear, touch, taste, uh, or smell radio signals. We can only hear them if we have the proper equipment, a radio, and if that radio is tuned to the proper frequency. And the same is true about God. God is everywhere around us and within us. Ephesians 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 23 says, Christ fills all things everywhere with himself. But we can't see, touch, hear, taste, or smell Christ in our typical circumstances. We can only know his presence and what he wants to communicate to us if we have the proper equipment, in this case a human soul, and if that soul is tuned to the correct frequency, in this case humility. What is humility? There's a lot we can say about humility, and our, the Holy Fathers of our Church have written entire books on it. Um, but for our intents and purposes, let's just say that humility means not thinking of ourselves as greater importance, um, but instead acknowledging the truth about ourselves, our smallness, our sins, and our weakness before God. It's, not about, it's about not seeing ourselves as better than any other person, because we all have flaws, we've all done wrong, and we're all going to die one day. It's not about self-hatred or agonizing about how terrible we are. It's just about being honest with ourselves. In the grand scheme of things, we're not as important as we like to think. And by the way, I think we all recognize this instinctively when it comes to other people. No one likes spending time with someone who looks down on other people. No one likes listening to someone brag or to celebrate their own accomplishments. Humility is just taking that logic and applying it to ourselves. Now, why is humility so important in our relationship with Christ? Well, Christ commands us to be humble all throughout the Gospels. In numerous places, he says things like, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. That's Mark uh, chapter 9, verse 35. Meaning that in order to find favor with God, we need to put others ahead of ourselves and to serve them. There are many other quotes like this uh, in the Gospels, and um, I'm not going in go into them all here. Uh, and the reason this is important is because we're called to be like Christ, and Christ himself is humble. That's all throughout the New Testament. Uh, the par to paraphrase Philippians chapter 2, despite being Almighty God, Jesus chose to humble himself by becoming a poor, unknown Jewish peasant who spent the last three years of his life homeless and rejected, only to be killed shamelessly, shamefully by his own people. He did all of this not for himself, but for us, so that we could have life with him. Our church, in one of uh, the most memorable icons, called, refers to it as i akratapinosis, the most extreme humility. If the God we worship is a humble God, more humble than we can imagine, then it only makes sense that we must humble ourselves in order to be with him, to feel him, to see him, and to know him. Now, how do we apply this to our lives? How do we cultivate humility? The number one way the church gives us to learn humility is the sacrament of confession. When we, go before a pre when we go to confession before a priest, we have the privilege of doing a serious and honest moral inventory with an experienced spiritual guide. We take an opportunity to open our minds and our pasts up and take a long, hard look at ourselves. During our preparation for confession and in the act of confession of its itself, the grace of God reveals things to us about ourselves that we don't learn in any other context. 
It's not easy because it requires us to be open and vulnerable. And we may find things out about ourselves that we don't really like. But that's why it's so important. Because we said before that true humility is just being honest with ourselves. And we can't be honest with ourselves unless we look at the whole picture of who we are and what we've done. And it's worth mentioning here that confession isn't about accusing or condemning ourselves. It's about healing. And we can't be healed unless we know what our wounds are. Now, some people I know are really uncomfortable with confession. They find excuses like, well, I can just confess my sins to God. Uh, in that's enough. I don't need a priest there. Uh, but make no mistake, that is a defense mechanism of the ego. We are afraid of what the priest might think of us, or we're afraid of what we might think of, our, uh, think of ourselves. And that's pride. But the grace of God is active in the sacrament of confession to keep the priest from judging us and to help him forget. And the grace of God makes us forgiven and helps us appreciate that we're forgiven. Uh, it's an incredibly liberating feeling to say out loud whatever we're ashamed of, whatever we feel guilt about, and to hear that God forgives us and to have the opportunity to be healed. I promise for everyone who's nervous about going to confession that it's not as difficult or as painful as we might think, no matter what we've done. Um, and we have no hope of gaining true God-pleasing humility without going to confession. Uh, but of course, confession is just the beginning of humility. And our church gives us a number of other resources uh, to help us become more humble every day. A few tools in our toolkit include comparing our lives to Christ and the saints, not bragging or talking about our accomplishments, forgiving insults and wrongs committed against us, accepting struggles patiently and without complaining, and being obedient to authority figures. The church also teaches us that marriage in family life is an excellent way to be humbled because I think anyone who's married knows that uh, in order to have a pleasant marriage, ego has got to go. Uh, the whole experience of our church across 20 centuries and in the lives of holy men like St. Paisios is that if we consistently apply these practices uh, alongside regular confession and examination of our hearts, we will attain true Christ-like humility. Then the radio of our hearts will be set to the right frequency, and we will be in direct, unmediated contact with God. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Thank you for watching.